What's going on guys, my name is Matt and what you're looking at right now is a gaming PC housed inside of a fully 3D printed case that I printed and assembled myself. It's using about a dozen individual pieces that all come together to make a beautiful and functional ITX case. The journey of learning how to 3D print and getting this all done was definitely not easy, but the end result was well worth it. This project took dozens of hours to print, create a pile of failed parts and support material, and the end result is far from perfect, but I'm super excited to share the entire process with you. But before we take a closer look at the end product, we need to rewind to give you a better idea of how this all came to be. Now I'm not a complete noob to 3D printing, as way back in 2015, I actually used my first tax return to buy an XYZ printing DaVinci 1.0. I printed a ton of stuff on it, learned the basics of 3D design, and was really engrossed in the world of 3D printing for a few years. But after a while, the printer broke, and I kind of fell out of the hobby. I always knew I would eventually get back into it, and after a nearly 5 year break, I got an opportunity to do just that. See, Creality recently reached out to see if I wanted to test out the Ender 5 S1 on the channel, but I didn't want to accept unless I knew I could make a cool video with it. Around the same time, I stumbled upon a channel called Maker Unit who designs and prints custom cases, and I instantly knew this would be the perfect way of testing out the machine. After getting permission to use one of his designs, I gave Creality the go ahead to send out the printer for testing, and about a week later this box landed on my doorstep. The Ender 5 S1 comes partially assembled, meaning you do have to finish building it yourself. The included guide is pretty straightforward, but it did take a couple hours to assemble and get set up. I'll be going more in depth about this printer towards the end of the video, but once I leveled the bed and loaded in some filament, I was ready for my first test print. One of the preloaded designs is a Benchy, so I went ahead and tried that out. A Benchy is the most popular 3D printing benchmark as it's pretty quick to print and tests a ton of different aspects of 3D printing to see how well your machine is calibrated. The first print turned out pretty darn good, but it did show me I need to switch things up a bit. The standing desk the printer was on definitely wasn't an ideal surface as it shook a ton while printing, which was bad for filming and definitely introduced another area for problems to arise. The second thing I needed to change was the plate. The print stuck very well to the included plastic plate, but it actually stuck too well. This little benchy took a ton of effort to get off, which scared me because I was planning on printing big panels that had much more surface area. To fix this, I went ahead and got a PEI coated metal plate for about $20 that works much better. The Ender 5 S1 is not an entry level printer and really should include a PEI plate in my opinion. I printed another Benchy on the PEI plate and once cooled it literally dislodged itself from the plate, which is good. I had to put zero effort into removing it. I didn't print any of the case parts yet as I wanted the printer to be calibrated really well beforehand because many of these prints were going to take 8 plus hours and multiple failed prints could start to add up in both cost and time. Over the course of the next day or so, I experimented with settings and calibration and ended up with some bad prints and eventually ended up with some pretty good prints. But I never felt I could get the bed perfectly level. No matter how many times I manually and auto leveled, the prints would either be too close and elephant foot or be too far away and not adhere properly. I also knew I wanted time lapses of the case printing and I had an old Pixel 4a with a time lapse mode but needed a phone tripod mount. I was on Amazon and almost hit the buy button on one for 5 or 10 bucks but then I realized I could probably just print one. So I did. I found this 3 piece design where this piece slides into the main one and a 3D printed nut provides the clamping pressure when your phone is inserted. You also use a normal metal nut to attach it to a tripod itself. This works really well and was another good test of the printer itself. The final test print was a print in place maker coin with rotatable gears. I ended up running out of and switching out filaments mid print and everything looked decent but the head was a little too close to the bed and some of the pieces were fused together. I tried to manually detach the shafts from the gears but one broke so it doesn't really work as intended. Which is frustrating because I had put a ton of time into calibrating and learning how to print on this machine. But at this point, I decided enough was enough and it was time to start printing case parts. 
I was going to print all the internal parts in this matte grey PLA and then print most of the exterior parts in a few different colors to show how customizable the look of a 3D printed case is. Maker Unit, who designed this case has all the files free to download and I'll link those along with his original video on the case in the description below. This is his first design and he's made some even cooler ones recently but I figured you can check those out for yourself. I'll eventually print and test a case of my own design, but for now, I'll be using this cool one from Maker Unit. So after downloading all the files, I decided to first print the motherboard mounting plate, which after loading it into the slicer, I found was just barely too big to fit flat on the Ender 5 S1's build plate, so I had to print it on its side, which required a fair bit of support material. I used Embrace Making's free profile for the Ender 5 S1 and Prusa slicer, which I'll also have linked below, and using that profile, the machine prints at a similar quality to the Creality Slicer's default S1 profile, but considerably faster. So after loading the printer up with the file, I pressed print and away it went. Fortunately, the print completed successfully first try. I did have to remove support material, but the end result was a very dimensionally accurate part. There definitely was some z-axis wobble, but nothing too crazy. Also, I was very surprised at how durable and strong this panel felt, even when flexed with the direction of the print lines. This gave me confidence to do an overnight print, so I loaded up the power supply mounting panel, which is one of the largest pieces, and which was going to take an estimated 16 hours to print. So I sliced the file, loaded it into the printer, pressed print, went to bed, and the print randomly stopped about an hour or two in. This was definitely frustrating, but at least it didn't fail towards the end of the print. Again, the power supply panel was just barely too big to lay flat on the build platform, so I had to rotate it vertically and use a ton of support material, but luckily the second attempt at printing it went super smooth. What I was left with was this giant monolith of plastic panel and support material. Removing all this material was quite satisfying, but it was also kind of sad knowing I wasted a bunch of material and print time for support. With that done, I printed the rest of the parts that were going to be in the matte gray PLA. This includes the bottom panel with vented openings to supply the GPU with fresh air, the top fan mount piece which is an important structural part, the top mesh slash power button mount to protect and hide the fan blades, and the power supply clamping piece. These all turned out pretty good. The power supply clamping panel was a little rough, but it's been able to do its job and it's on the inside, so it's not going to be seen under normal circumstances. With all the internal frame and other gray pieces done, I could move on to the exterior pieces. I originally got this two pack of Creality PLA in white and black, but when printing the exterior panel, it failed. Basically, it kind of skipped parts of a layer or two, which effectively ruined the print visually, in my opinion. After re leveling, playing with slicer settings, cleaning the bed along with the nozzle, the same thing happened again. Testing with the black roll from this 2-pack also resulted in some pretty bad prints. I'm not sure what caused this, but I concluded that something was bad with this cheap Creality PLA and kind of gave up on it. Switching to this light blue matte PLA from Overture, the print quality was looking good, but the printer randomly stopped printing after a few hours. Redoing the print and praying that it would work this time, the Ender 5 S1 completed the print which was nerve wracking the last few hours as this part took over 20 hours to print. The quality definitely diminished towards the end at the less supported areas, but this isn't the end of the world in my opinion. I probably could have added some support material, but again, this took nearly a full 24 hours and over 600 grams of filament to print, so added support material just didn't seem worth it. With that done, I printed the top panel that the fan cover slash power button mount fits into, the back panel cover that covers the gaps around the component's rear I.O along with the feet and motherboard spacers. Then once those were all done, I printed those same exterior parts but using this multicolor silk PLA which gives a color shifting look. It's not actually changing colors, it's just three colors side by side by side in a single strand of filament. This stuff is similarly priced to single color PLA and the print quality is still pretty darn good. With all those prints along with an assortment of flathead wood screws, 
metric nuts and bolts, some random fan screws, and a power button, I was ready to start assembling this case and the computer that was going to go inside of it. The parts going into this for now are just some relatively modern mid-range slash budget components. I mainly just wanted to test the temps on this and see if it would run with acceptable thermals and noise output. Then in the future, I might do a more legit build in this case. Assembling this case and the computer inside of it is a bit like completing a puzzle, which is common for small form factor cases. I start by getting the motherboard ready, which is a Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. I installed the Ryzen 5 5600 6 core CPU inside, then installed the low profile Thermalrite AXP90 CPU cooler. I could have fit a Ryzen stock cooler, but I figured using this would give me more room for cables in this tight enclosure. Then I installed the 32GB of Corsair LPX DDR4 RAM and the NVMe SSD into the board. With that done, I attached it to the motherboard mounting plate with some metric nuts and bolts. I didn't end up using the spacers because the shielding on the back of this board acted as a spacer. Then I inserted the power supply into its mounting panel, which is a 650 watt, 80 plus gold rated SFX unit from FSP. With that in, I added the corresponding mounting plate on top and secured it with some of the flathead wood screws I showed earlier. Next, I took the feet and attached them to the bottom of the panel with more wood screws. This case is designed with countersunk holes so all the screws are nicely hidden away. Next, I attached the 140mm Thermalrite fan to the top fan mount as exhaust using some standard fan screws. This is the only case fan, but because it's a full-sized 140mm unit, it means it should work out well. After that, I fed a momentary switch through the top fan grill and secured it using the included washer and nut. This is a 12mm switch that I soldered some jumper wires to so I could attach it to the motherboard. Then I took the power supply panel, lined it up with the bottom piece, and secured it using three fan screws, which seems to be a pretty secure way of attaching these panels together. Next, I installed the short Asus RTX 3060 to the motherboard, and when lining it up with the other parts, I realized it was going to be too thick and that I was going to need a true dual slot card. After looking at what I had on hand, the only other modern card that I had that would also fit is the infamous AMD RX 6500 XT. But it fits in the case and will work fine for testing out thermals and functionality. So after installing that into place, I went ahead and plugged in the graphics card power, the 24 pin power, two jumper cables for the power button, and finally the CPU power cable. Next, I lined up the motherboard tray with the bottom panel and again attached it with three fan screws. At this point, the system was really starting to come together, which was really cool to see. Then I struggled a bit, but got the back panel in place and secured it with some more fan screws. Next, I set in the top fan mount and secured it with six more screws, finalizing the internal frame structure. After that, I inserted the fan grill into the top plate, but realized I didn't need that assembly just yet. Next, I made sure all the cables were fully inside of the frame, and the power button jumper cables were fed through the smartly placed cable pass-through. With that done, I could slide the outer shell on, which was pretty satisfying to see it neatly slip into place. Finally, I connected the power button, secured the top panel with four screws, and secured the outer panel at the back with a few more screws. With that done, the 3D printed PC case was completed, and I have to say, the final result is a compact, minimalistic ITX PC made in a colorway that fits my preferences perfectly. Again, I want to thank Maker Unit for designing such an awesome case and giving the files away for free to anyone who wants to print their own. This is his first design, which is super impressive, and his more recent designs are even better. What's really awesome about 3D printing a case is you can use whatever colors you want. For example, remember those color shifting parts I talked about earlier? Well, in about three minutes, I was able to switch out the matte blue pieces for those and completely transform the look of this case. There are tons of different filaments available, so the possibilities are basically endless. I'll talk more about the cost and time to print this case in a minute, but first it's time to power on this machine and see how it performs in terms of noise and temps. Pressing the power button is a bit anticlimactic because there aren't any lights and no window, but the fan spun right up and the PC booted up no problem. At idle, the PC is audible, but not loud at all, and under gaming load, it does get a little noisy, but not what I would consider obnoxiously loud. 
you could probably use a larger CPU cooler and shorter cables, which would likely improve noise output by a significant margin. I tested a few different games, including Borderlands 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Far Cry 6. During testing, the CPU stayed in the range of 62 to 71 degrees, which is quite good, and the GPU stayed in the range of 51 to 64 degrees, which is also very good. Overall, the thermals in this tiny case are surprisingly good even though it's fully plastic and relatively closed off. One concern people might have is that the PLA might deform, but because the PC is able to dissipate the heat as it's produced, it means this shouldn't be a problem, and this is something MakerUnit has addressed in a YouTube short that I'll link down below. In terms of print time and cost, to print all the parts in the way I did took about 70 hours of print time and used about $27 in filament. With a larger bed and faster printer, you'd be able to cut down on print time and material used, but that would still likely result in 50 plus hours of print time and a little over $20 in filament. I bought extras of the metal fasteners and power buttons, but that's another cost which will be about $5 just buying everything individually. So $25 to $35 definitely isn't expensive for an ITX case like this, but it is beginning to approach the cost of some entry level enclosures. Overall, the prints I got weren't perfect, but unless you're looking super close, you really can't notice the defects, and this is a system that could fit perfectly in a modern office space or even a home theater setup. Assembly was a bit tricky, but overall straightforward, and again, I want to sing my praises to MakerUnit for the design. Seriously, go check out his channel and subscribe, his links are in the description, and make sure to tell him that Matt sent you. With the case portion of this video done, I want to talk about the Ender 5 S1 for a minute and tell you whether or not I can recommend it. The Ender 5 S1 is essentially a souped up version of an Ender 3 with a more robust frame and a Sprite dual gear direct drive extruder. It comes in at $450 to $550 and is marketed as being a super fast printer, but to get those fast speeds you need the $150 Sonic Pad, which I do have but didn't use for this video as I wanted to test the base performance of this machine. Print speeds on the standard S1 are decent, but not amazing, and overall for the $500-ish price tag, it's a bit hard to recommend. The print quality is pretty good, but I found it nearly impossible to get the bed perfectly leveled. Beyond this, there are some minor annoyances like the printer just stopping randomly mid-print, and every time you press an input on the screen, it makes a loud beeping noise with no way to disable it. Just listen. Once you add a PEI bed and the Sonic Pad, you're up to about $600 to $700, and for around that same price, you could get the much better Bamboo Labs P1P, which has a fully automatic bed leveling system and requires no tuning to get fast, good quality prints. If you're a tinkerer and modder, the Ender 5 S1 is a great printer and platform to work with, but for someone like me who just wants good quality prints without a ton of tuning, it's hard to recommend. Overall, getting the Ender 5 S1 and printing this case has reignited my passion for 3D printing, and if you guys end up liking this video, there will definitely be more like it coming in the future. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this video in terms of the case, the Ender 5 S1, and what 3D printer content you'd like to see from me in the future, so make sure to leave all your feedback in the comments below. Thanks again to Creality for sending out the Ender 5 S1 and MakerUnit for allowing me to print his case design. I mention a lot of stuff in this video and everything will be linked in the description below. So yeah guys, I think it's time to wrap this video up. If you guys liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This project was a lot of work, but I think the end result was well worth it. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.